Now, if the price of lettuce seems too steep, you might want to consider switching to avocados and have a look at a few creative recipes. Farmers say there's an oversupply of the breakfast fruit due to overplanting and New Zealand exports. Joining me live is avocado farmer Paul Shoker. Paul's up there near Coffs Harbour. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, thanks. How does this affect you guys? Well, I guess, um, you know, over the last two years, uh, we have seen um, prices uh, come back a fair way for us. Um, but mind you, I don't think, um, not after any sympathy, we've had a, a good 10-year period uh, in the avocado industry uh, where we've seen good pricing. Uh, but however, you know, it's a bit of a shock. Uh, our prices are probably about 60% down where they were about two years ago. Um, so obviously everyone's scrambling to try and uh, uh, increase consumption. Yeah, and that's that's the point, isn't it, Paul? Uh, you know, swings and roundabouts. With the, the drop in price, you're getting quite a bit of free publicity. Here's a free hit here for, uh, <laughs> for you to tell people how to use avocados because uh, at the other end of the, uh, the, the aisle, lettuce is, a, what, 10, 11 bucks a pop. Yeah, well, that's it. And I think um, it's always the case. Um, you know, there's plenty of value out there. Um, and, um, you know, if you can't afford lettuce, uh, maybe put some avocado uh, on a sandwich. So uh, these prices are expected to hold good for at least a couple of years because uh, there's significant uh, expansion in the industry uh, on the back of good prices. So um, we expect at least for the next five, six plus years, um, you know, avocados to be relatively cheap. Uh, but we are at the same time also calling upon government to um, look to increase uh, export opportunities as well. You know, we've got a... Uh, a uh, in-demand product here um, that's um, fresh uh, and healthy for you. So um, into whether it's Southeast Asia, many countries like that, I would love to have Australian avocados, but we just need a bit of a push there to get those export markets developed. Yeah, well, tell us a little bit more about that. How transportable are they, Paul? Oh, they are, you know, um, uh, for example, uh, South Africa, throughout uh, Mexico, you know, they're huge exporting nations. Um, we're a relatively small uh, industry on the national, le- uh, on the international level. Uh, and we do obviously see a lot of New Zealand avocados um, uh, from time to time in Australia. So uh, they can be transported quite easily. Um, but also there's a lot of protocols involved in um, uh, exporting avocados. Well, can you tell us more about how we got to this point? We, we sort of touched on a couple of brief uh, reasons, but it doesn't give the full picture as to why avocados mm-hmm. are in the supply they're in and the price they're at. Yeah, well, we've been growing for over 30 years. Uh, and we, you know, to, in all honesty, we, uh, there was a 10-year period there of unprecedented um, prosperity and growth in our industry. Um, but at the same time, you know, I think we've got to be... Uh, uh, practical here. It's also, you know, we want more consumers to access our produce. We want more people, more Australian families to enjoy affordable avocados. So it's not the end of the world. It is disappointing to see, um, you know, a lot of the prices are towards um, break even and, you know, we're barely meeting our cost of production. So that, that is a bit disappointing. Um, but at the same time, we've seen hundreds of thousands of new plantings going. A lot of those plantings still haven't uh, borne any fruit yet. Um, so in the coming years, we will see uh, more production come online. And I guess the concern is that, um, you know, we would like to see the retailer stick with Australian avocados. Um, the temptation is um, coming into spring, uh, they will shift to New Zealand avocados. However, the expansion in uh, Western Australia in particular uh, does mean that we have avocados now pretty much 10 months of the year. So um, there's good value there for customers and uh, good produce as well. And, and this season looks like it's a good crop as well. I remember an advertising campaign, I've been around for a long time, I remember an advertising yeah. campaign about mushrooms saying they're the great all-rounders. I, I would have to think that avocado is something very, very similar. So it's sort of, it's almost begging for a ad or a PR campaign in and around the use of avocados. Like I even see it at home with my wife and three children, you know, you see it on sushi. My wife uses some great uh, salads. Yeah with avocados and feta and then they're in sandwiches. You can use avocados and they're good for you. Absolutely. I remember as a kid, um, I'd take avocado on a sandwich and everyone would look at you thinking, oh, geez, what's this um, you've got? Uh, but nowadays it's very trendy. Um, uh, you know, probably, I think it's Instagram's most uh, commonly um, um, photographed food. Um, so, yeah, we... we you know, avocados are increasing in popularity and, you know, I see them uh, in blends and shakes and all that sort of thing. Um, I personally just like it on a bit of toast uh, and on a sandwich, uh, but 
you know, there's a lot of creative options people can uh, explore. And uh, when they're cheap, it doesn't really matter how they taste, uh, how whatever recipe you come up with, uh, because um, you can ultimately uh, afford to uh, experiment a bit more. Oh, yeah, you mentioned the warmer months. I love avocado in a, in a salad with mango and that kind of thing is so beautiful yeah. and refreshing. So um, d- d- despite the price, um, how are you guys? Are you, are you in decent shape with, with your business through a, a very difficult time for everybody because of COVID? Yeah. Well, we have seen, because um, we do also grow bananas, we have seen massive disruption in uh, consumer buying habits uh, through COVID. And obviously also in northern New South Wales where we are, we've had massive impact of uh, flooding. Um, so, you know, trees have looked better in the past, but, um, you know, we're, we're all right. I think, um, you know, we're, we're grateful that, um, you know, consumers keep buying our produce, um, you know, um, and well, especially with the bananas and the avocados, they are increasingly staples. Um, so I think we're doing all right. Um, the, the biggest thing, I guess, for us is uh, we've been having issues with uh, sourcing labour and uh, input costs of fertiliser, chemical, uh, and, and obviously diesel as well. So uh, there's significant cost pressures there. Uh, and at the same time, we're battling lower prices. So I think that's where um, a lot of the, uh, I guess, stress and uh, concern about pricing comes from. Yeah, sourcing labour is a difficult problem for, for people across all industry at the moment. But on a brighter note, when people are putting their barbecues together for tomorrow night's State of Origin game with New South Wales having a victory, hopefully by 12 or plus, put a salad full of avocado in it. That's what we say. Put, put the Absolutely. avocado on the table. Paul, good to chat with you, buddy. No worries. Thanks.